คือ Zo Are you fucking kidding me? Nice. On 10 pity? What are you getting? I literally have them pulled on this banner since I pulled Albedo. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. I mean, either oh, way, God. it's completely useless for you unless it's Mona. Unless it's a Mona! God it! <laughs> nice. It's completely <laughs> worthless. Jinx won't do C1. And another Sucrose just to, just to say f*** you. <laughs> so I'm a C8 Sucrose now. <laughs> because, uh... For those of you who don't know, just so that Jinx doesn't bias his understanding of characters, he doesn't ever and use... And comp power and whatnot, I don't use constellations on five stars. Yeah, on five stars. And then even then, so, yeah, he's not going to use hey. any of these cons on Bennett because he wants yeah, to show Yeah, until they that... give me the ability to toggle them, I'm not going to get take my Bennett over C1. Yeah, so that he can show people like, hey, this is a pro this is proof that C1 Bennett is like extraordinary. Is overpowered as shit. Stand back! Benny's a I have failed here. It's not we are. Shit, Ning died. I'm not paying attention. Benny's adventure team. Reset. Hello everyone, this is Jinx and I'm a Genshin Impact Math Guide now. So it has been a few days since Alfredo has been out and all the new 1.2 content has been released. I do apologize for how long it took to get this information out to you guys. I did take two days off for Christmas because, you know, family time and stuff, work-life balance is the thing I'm trying to be better about. And I spent like 20 of the first 24 hours of Alfredo being out, basically testing, discussing with theory crafters, looking at and crunching math, comparing notes. So I was so tired after all of that, I just didn't have the energy to record a good video for you guys for day one. I did post some quick thoughts about Alfredo on my Twitter, which you should go follow if you want to get all of the most up-to-date information and my opinions on things and the math I'm doing and all that kind of stuff. It's a lot easier to spend like five minutes putting out a tweet as opposed to spending the several hours it takes me to actually put together a full video. So if I discover anything cool, if I have any thoughts about stuff that I haven't yet been able to put into video form, it'll always end up on my Twitter first. The at Jinx Mathless is my personal Twitter where I post stuff like that, and then the at Jinx Tuner is our company company account run by Tuner. That one is the company account, it's for things like business inquiries, updates about the channel, things about Tuner's Twitch, all that kind of more professional stuff. My personal Twitter is either for math or posting, basically. Also in that last tweet, I did talk about the ICD reset tech. I won't be talking about that much in here, but the TLDR, it, it's not nearly as good as we initially thought it is. In a future video, I'll probably just briefly talk about the math behind it and why it's deceivingly not that good, even though it seems like really good burst damage. But yeah, future video. Also, so quick note, don't forget to check out Tuner over twitch.tv slash Tuner. He did do a lot of the Alfredo testing with Noel and found out that he's just not a very good battery for her. He's also doing a lot of testing on freeze compositions using new cryo sets. The next video we have coming out, we'll probably be talking about that as well and talking about why Kaya is actually currently the premier cryo carry, not Chong Yun. Chong Yun's kind of a terrible carry. All right, so let's talk about what we're going to talk about in this video, which is what we think about Alfredo so far. So all of the info in here is just going to be a cumulative result of the independent testing that Tuner and I have done, the math I have crunched, as well as all of the many, many, many hours of discussion I've had with other theory crafters, comparing notes, looking at their math, and all of their opinions as well. And so far, he is looking like the most balanced five-star they have ever put out. He is not Zhongli release weak, he is not Chi Chi level scaling issues into the late game, but he is also not Ventikli and Deluke busted overpowered strong must pull. In fact, that's kind of the best way that Tuner and I, after discussing it, can put it, is that he's not a must-pull unit, but he is still a good unit. See, if someone like Venti or Deluc were on banner, we would tell you that they are basically must-pull. You should grab them while you can. Because the amount of insane top-tier, higher than basically anything else in the game, output that Deluc and Venti can put out out, especially considering that you don't even need to be very skilled to use them effectively. Makes them effectively must-pull, they are just simply put the best units in the game regardless of your skill level. Even Klee we wouldn't really consider must-pulled because despite the fact that she has one of the top DPS, base DPS, and total DPS outputs in the game as a carry at the Luke level, she requires you to learn how to play her. Even if you don't want to bother learning the animation cancels to give her slight increases on her DPS, you do have to learn how to play her positionally because she's very squishy 
but very mobile, and so you have to be constantly making use of short hop cancels and things like that in order to make sure she doesn't get decked. And Alfredo, just simply put, isn't at this broken, overpowered level, which I do think is a good thing, but he's also not Zhongli release level weak. He's just incredibly well balanced. That being said, even though he isn't must pull, I do consider Bennett must pull and Bennett's on this banner. So even if you get an Alfredo accidentally while trying to pull for either Con Zero or Cons 1 Bennett, Cons 1 is his biggest power spike, by the way. Again, he's not a bad unit and real talk, Bennett is a must pull unit in my opinion and is the real five star on this banner. Deluke and Venti are the only other units in this entire game, including four and five stars that I would consider more important or at the same level of importance as pulling a Bennett. But at the end of the day, because Alfredo is not at this must-pull level of yes, you should absolutely get him, all we can really do with this video is let you know about everything we have learned about him, our opinions on him, so you can make an informed decision for your own unique situation on whether or not you want to pull for him. So in this video, we're going to be talking about what makes him strong, what his issues are that hold him back from being a top, top, pick must pull overpowered units as well as you know talking about his builds and his weapons and stuff because everyone wants to know that stuff how do i build my Alfredo if i have one all right so let's just talk about what his very blatant power is what the good things about him are and why you might want to put him into your team compositions and just to get this out of the way right off the bat no he is not going to be a good physical dps carry like Li with crescent pike is going to be he is meant to be a burst damage support and you should build him and run him as a burst damage support his basic attack output is so weak it's actually lower talent damage percentage per second than Barbers and Chong Yun's and they are two of the lower end. His charge attack spam is actually pretty good because you can walk cancel it to make it much faster however outside of freeze comps you can't really consistently do charge attack longsword builds and he screws up freeze comps because his passive damage on his E actually shatters freeze so just don't run him as a carry unless you really insist on doing it because you like him he's meant to be a burst support. Alright let's talk Talk about his two biggest benefits as being a member of any team composition that make him very, very desirable. First off, his Ascension 4 passive gives you 125 EM for your team, Elemental Mastery, which is a fantastic buff to reaction teams. And the other thing is that he is an incredibly cheap unit for a burst damage support to build to get very nice output out of. So let's start by talking about the EM buffing first because that's a simpler one and faster one to go over because the only other EM EM buffer in the game is Sucrose. Now 125 EM is a lot of EM to be giving your reaction teams and the nice thing is if you're concerned about Alfredo messing up reaction teams because he's applying Geo and therefore crystallizing fairly often with his turret ability, it's actually generally speaking not an issue because the amount of Geo application applies is so low it generally doesn't burn elemental auras on enemies so it doesn't mess up your reactions. There are some niche situations where he might mess things up, for example, he can mess up the Chong Yun triple melt combo with Bennett ult into Chong Yun ult, where the Chong Yun ult is able to melt three times. I haven't tested it yet, but in theory, it should be messed up if an Alfredo E procs on the Bennett ult while you're trying to do the triple melt. But again, these are niche situations. In general, he does not mess up reaction teams. Now, the important breakpoint of, you know, running Alfredo versus Sucrose is at what point does Sucrose provide as much of an EM buff as Alfredo does? And the answer to that is three. 375 Elemental Mastery. If you can get your Sucrose to 375 Elemental Mastery, she is also going to be providing 125 EM from her Ascension 1 and Ascension 4 passives. This is actually not a very unrealistic amount of EM for Sucrose to hit because she should generally late game be running a Sacrificial Fragments that gives her a giant chunk of EM and she should be running like at least 1 to 2 EM pieces as well as aiming for EM substats. However, this does require you to have a good set on your Sucrose. You're looking at probably at at least a plus 16 set with a well leveled up sacrificial fragments to hit this EM breakpoints. This means that Alfredo is simply put going to be better as a cheap steeps unit in terms of EM buffing. Even if he has zero EM and doesn't have any artifacts on him, he's still giving you 125 EM whenever he pops his ult. However, ever as a cheap steeps unit, Sucrose also provides an insane amount of value 
because A, Venera Force Set is simply better than Petra Force Set and is basically super easy to apply with Sucrose because everything she does applies Swirl. And as a very, very cheap unit, Sucrose can still run Dragon Slayers to give your main carry or biggest DPS unit on your team a big attack buff. And not having a set doesn't change Sucrose's ability to group up enemy units so that you can consolidate AoE damage and kill an entire group faster than you would otherwise. Having played around with both but not having done full team calculations involving both of them, I will personally say that Alfredo is 100% better than Sucrose unless you have minimum C1. Sucrose simply put just has really big energy as well as uptime issues without Constellation 1 because her cooldowns are egregiously long. And honestly, even with Sac Frax and Constellation 1, in extended fights, Sucrose still tends to have very big DPS dips because her cooldowns are just really long. Like, her E does almost as much damage as Venti's E does at talent level 6 if Sucrose has constellations and has a talent level 9 E. Although it's still weaker than Venti's, but the bigger issue is not the fact that it does less damage per hit than Venti's, it's the fact that Venti's is a 6 second cooldown and hers is 15. Not only does this hurt her energy generation for her ult, which by the way isn't AT cost ult, it's also just generally speaking lower DPS than other options because you're simply not being able to spam it more than once every 15 seconds. However, ever, at Constellation 6, Sucrose gets so much f***ing utility for your team, I'm not honestly sure if Alfredo at C0 competes. This would require me to do some more full team DPS output calculations because she's still going to be doing less DPS than Alfredo is, but the extra utility she offers for the rest of the team might make her better. Playtesting it, I do find Sucrose to get me faster faster clears at C6 compared to C0 Alfredo. But again, haven't done full calcs on it, it's just that the extra utility she gets from C6 on top of Venera on top of grouping makes her fantastic for team comms. And with Sucrose being on this banner, a high constellation Sucrose is realistic for you to have on accident. Now, of course, you can run both Sucrose as well as Alfredo in a team, but that leaves you only two other units to consolidate both a healer as well as a strong reaction synergy with to make use of the EM buffing you're putting in. Which, personally, the only strong composition like that I've found so far is using Bennett as well as either Child or Mona because you can just do big vape ults and get a crap load of EM for those big vape ults. I'm not super sold on it being very good, though. Regardless, though, at the end of the day, you need two teams for Abyss, so having an Alfredo on one side and Sucros on the other is a very strong viable option. Although this does assume you don't have a Venti because Venti just outdoes both by a mile. I know that both Sucros as well as Alfredo can get pretty pretty impressive numbers out, but I'll be honest, if you think that either can even come close to competing with Venti, you don't own a Venti. But this is also true comparing anyone to Venti, because Venti is the only 6-star unit in this game. Now, let's talk about the other huge strength that Alfredo has, which is he is probably the cheapest burst damage support to build in the game to just add pure raw damage to your team. Other than probably Venti, but again, it's not really fair to compare Venti to anything else in this game. Now, the build in question is going to be the build focused around increasing his E damage for very cheap, which is a defense Harbinger of Dawn setup. This build is so effective and so cheap because, simply put, it doesn't require you to have to stack a lot of attack, which gets very expensive. See, because his E scales exclusively off of his defense, A, you already have pretty good base defense at level 60 out of 70, he's at 610 already. But it also means he's really good at using all of the other artifacts you've rolled defense substats on that are kind of useless for everyone else to increase his damage. And it also means that because his damage isn't going to be dependent on attack scaling, you can kind of just ignore it entirely. To prove this point, in this next clip, I am just going to be using a level 1 refinement for Harbinger of Dawn for the crit stats it gives. Which, by the way, is a 3-star weapon, along with a 2-piece Petra, as well as a plus 16 Geo Cup, And then just filling in the rest with random artifacts that had high defense and crit substat rolls that don't even equal a set bonus. This does lead to me having a little bit over 100% extra defense on my build, as well as having a decent amount of crit stats. You may be wondering why we're not even really caring too much about building for his ult damage, and that's because his ult is kind of misleading. It does say that it makes 7 transient blossoms when you pop your ult, but realistically 2 to 3 hit per target. This ends up putting the end damage per target on his ult around the same level as Zhongli's at similar talent levels, which is not bad, but is not nearly as good as his E damage output can be when when you're triggering it consistently. Especially when we're looking at cost efficiency, because simply put, it's a lot harder to stack a lot of effective attack than it is to just build some defense with trash artifacts. Real quick side note about how Alfredo's 
all it works, by the way. It is possible to get more than two to three blossoms per target if you couple him with Venti. Basically, the way that targeting works on his ult makes it so that it assigns one blossom per target and then any remainder just kind of get thrown out in random. This means if you have four or more enemies clustered inside of Venti's ult, you can theoretically get them to all get hit by four or more blossoms. This is a very specific synergy against groups only that Alfredo can do with Venti, but I'm not the biggest fan of Alfredo Venti teams because it makes it really hard to fit in healers as well as counter elements for Abyss Floors. And frankly speaking, running either Venti with Gene or a Nemo MC to battery Venti so he can build more damage and still auto off cooldown is just way stronger. Now, if we take this out into the field and take a look at what it does to the new Lava Troll in the new domain, which in my opinion is the new best training pole in the game because he has about Abyss 12 3 level HP levels, we are looking at 4.1k per crit as well as anywhere from around 1700 to 1900 for non crits. I'm actually not sure why they're varying here. I need to do more testing and figure out if there's some specific mechanic with a Lava Troll that's making this happen. Regardless, these are really big numbers for a level 1 3 star weapon and junk artifacts. Now, Harbinger of Dawn is dependent on him remaining over 90% health in order for it to be active, but this is not too difficult to achieve on Alfredo because his E lasts for 30 seconds and has a 4 second cooldown. And on top of that, his ult has iframes, so really the only time you actually have a chance to get hit on Alfredo is either when you're putting your first E down or if you have to switch to him to reposition the E, and that's only if you aren't doing it when you're safe. This is an incredibly cheap build for such nice base DPS numbers that can basically fit into most any team comp and is definitely a big strength of his to consider. Also, keep in mind, I am using a lot of different builds to test on him during these various background clips, which is why you'll see a lot of variance in the amount of damage he's doing on his E and his ult. We'll discuss builds more at the end of the video, but regardless, this is a big strength of his. So, as a cheap deeps unit that just kind of uses random artifacts that had quote-unquote bad substat rerolls until a defense-focused character came out, out, these are looking pretty good. Now, this does admittedly make his ult hit kind of like a moist noodle. It's not stupidly low damage or anything, but because you're not building any attack for his ult, it's kind of mostly there for the Ascension 4 buff. The last thing I'd like to mention about his strengths, which isn't as big as the other two, but is a nice thing to consider, is that he's just an incredibly easy to use unit that's very flexible. As long as you're fighting within his circle, you don't ever have to switch back to Alfredo except to pop his ult or everything. 30 seconds to replace a new circle. And if you do end up needing to replace a new circle because it's only a 4 second cooldown, it's incredibly easy to just place down a new one and then switch off again. And because he's just a base damage bot that also happens to buff EM, he pretty much fits into almost every team comp as just a random Petra splash unit. He doesn't have any real specific synergies he needs to be built for, he just increases your team's reaction damage and also just deals decent base damage and occasionally makes some shields. This does mean if you don't have a lot of units that A, have investment, but B, even have the units, period, he's really nice for this flexibility because he can just pretty much go in most any team. So if he's an incredibly flexible unit that can fit into pretty much any team as either a Petra support or just a base DPS support that doesn't mess up reactions and in fact makes pretty much any reactions in your teams better, and his defense focus build for his E damage is so incredibly cheap to build versus other burst damage supports in the game, which falls in with a cheap deeps philosophy of this channel, then why do I still not think he's a must-pull unit? Well, that's because he does have a lot of issues that we need to talk about. His first big issue is simply put, his energy generation is kind of shit. See, the big thing is he has gotcha energy RNG just like Zhongli does. Now, current testing data shows it's around 60-ish percent proc rate, which is pretty decent for one particle every two seconds, except for you're also not always going to be getting this every two seconds. While it is possible to manufacture scenarios where you'll be dealing damage exactly every two seconds, such as running him with characters like Fischl or Klee's ult, or doing pyro damage on units that can take the damage over time, things like that, Unless you are going to be setting up these kinds of team comps and playing in ways that do guarantee this consistent damage happening exactly at every two seconds, realistically in real combat we're probably looking more at like two and a half to three seconds between procs, which does make his energy generation, including the 60%, about if not worse than Zhongli's. Plus, the simple fact that it's gotcha means that I did have an outlier case in a test where I only got one energy particle out of five procs. Now, this is anywhere from 10 
to 15 seconds for only one energy particle, which is egregiously bad. The reality is that having RNG energy generation does mean that you can't reliably build the correct amount of energy recharge you might need for him. Because if you simply get unlucky, you might end up having really bad RNG with a few of his energy generation procs, and then suddenly your ult's coming out 20 seconds later because you got unlucky. And then sometimes it comes out 10 seconds early because you got lucky. This isn't a huge issue because at least so far from our calculations, even if you aren't going for a cheap build on him, defense is still the better way to build him than attack. Simply put, the DPS output on his E consistently is generally going to be higher DPS than his ult is going to be, so you just build for that with defense. At least according to our current calculations, it is still early on, so we aren't 100% sure about this yet, but you know, defense is definitely looking to be the better build overall. And yes, I do mean for con 0, in fact cons 2 makes it even more defense focused, but even for con 0, his E just seems to be the better skill to build for. But this does mean that he is a terrible battery for other Geo units, like if you want to run him with Noel especially, or if you want to run him with Zhongli. Now, I do think that the best current double Geo combo is going to be Ningguang and Alfredo, because they complement each other very well. Ningguang is simply put the best Geo unit in the game currently, at least in my opinion, because her single target output is so insanely high. However, I do think she's a little constellation dependent. You do at least want C2 Ning so that she can self-battery herself as well as have decent AoE damage through her double E's. And C6 Ning is so insanely powerful that with the new Geo Resonance they're looking at putting out, she might actually be competing with Klee and Deluke as a carry option. Now, because C2 Ning doesn't have energy issues, Alfredo's lack of energy generation consistency isn't really a problem for her, and simply put, they complement each other well in terms of just base raw DPS output. If you learn how the animation cancel properly on Ning Wang, her general charge combos are very good, and Alfredo just doesn't take a lot of field time away from her, unlike characters like GeoMC would. But anyway, moving on with Alfredo's issues, yes, his energy generation is kind of a big problem, and it does make it very hard for him to be a solo self-sustainer for keeping his ult up. And this does also mean that if you have a Constellation 1 Sucrose with Sacrificial Fragments, she'll generally have better uptime with keeping her E and buff up for the team. But one of his very big issues is simply put, he has split scaling. So this means if you do care about his potency in the later late late game, game where you have plus 20 sets with good substat rerolls, you probably have 5 star weapons and things like that. He's simply put not really looking as strong as other options due to his split scaling on his E and his alt. Again, calculations are early on this so we do need to look into things more, but the simple reality is that if we're looking at his benefit from 5 star weapons versus other characters with 5 star weapons, he doesn't get as much benefit because only half of his damage or less actually scales off of attack. Likewise, when you're going for a defense focus build for your E damage, your ult starts hitting like a moist noodle. And yes, the Harbinger of Dawn build does have very high crits, which is going to increase both of his damage outputs pretty significantly. But simply put, there is a reason why we don't just build exclusively crit and no attack on other units, because at the end of the day, it's not as efficient as having a more spread out build with a decent amount of attack and good crit stats. Now, keep in mind, again, we still are not 100% sure how bad this late game scaling looks like and it's entirely possible he's still a very sufficient late game character. For example, Robin, who is another theory crafter who I discuss with fairly often, did look at a comparison between Alfredo with a defense sans versus a Fischl with a battle pass weapon, good artifacts, all that kind of stuff. And Alfredo's E damage alone compared to a C0 Fischl is looking to be close to the same amount of base damage. Now, of course, Fischl also gets reactions in Ascension 4, which is going to increase her damage even further, and it further can be affected by Veritas and Venera. But still, C0 Fischl is one of the best base DPS burst damage supports in the game, and he is competing with her even in this later game setup. Now, of course, if you have C6 Fischl, her DPS spike is massive and massively outdoes Alfredo's. On top of that, you can build reactions reaction teams around her to really utilize her reaction output, and then of course you can still run 5 star weapons on Fischl to increase her output even more, and it very minorly affects Alfredo's. Again, we really don't know what it looks like yet because the calculations simply haven't been finished yet and all the testing hasn't been done yet, but he is going to potentially have these scaling issues I do want you to be aware of. And again, these may not even be relevant to you as a player because you may never get 5 star weapons or ever want to pull for 5 star weapons, you may never 
actually get these plus 20 wall subs that rerolled sets to make these characters more powerful. You may never be able to pull to get a C3 or C6 Fischl where her damage spikes up massively compared to C0. So at the end of the day, this may not even be relevant to you, but I want you to be aware that he does have potential scaling issues. Again, when we actually figure out how significant these scaling issues are, we'll be talking about in a future video because it's still early and more calcs simply have to be done. Also, speaking of Fischl, you'll notice that I'm using her a lot in my albedo testing, but it turns out that he might actually be bugged with her. It seems like there is a current bug that if Alfredo's E procs her Ascension 4 passive, it disables her A4 until she recasts her Oz, which is a pretty significant bug, and you probably should avoid running him with Fischl for the moment until we can confirm that this is or is not the case. I haven't actually tested it myself yet. But regardless, this is a bug, and Fischl's A4 is classically very buggy with lots of new units anyway, so eventually this will get fixed and we will get Apologems for it. Now, honestly, the other big issue I'm having with Alfredo is what I like to call having Kaching Syndrome. See, similar to Kaching, he is an incredibly flexible unit. He is very good for fighting basically any content in the game. He fits into a lot of different team comps and is just very flexible. But at the moment, if you do have access to basically every unit in the game like I do, as well as have decent constellations and a lot of your four stars, it is just hard to justify him as a best in slot choice over someone else. For example, I have a C6 Ning and I have a C6 Sucrose. Either one of them with full sets is just better than Alfredo in any comp I would want to put him in. Like I said earlier, I haven't done calcs to see if Alfredo's base damage increase over Sucrose's at C6 is still going to be better, but the amount of utility she brings is insane. And when I'm playtesting them, Sucrose just gets me faster clears because she groups up units and massively increases the damage of every other member of my team. Also, Veneera's is just so much a better set compared to Petra. And C6 Ningguang just dumps so much raw damage on the field, Alfredo just can't compete. She is competing with potentially Klee and Deluc once we get the new Geo Resonance for raw DPS outputs. And yes, this is Klee and Deluc at C0 with Vaporize teams. At least according to Robin's initial calcs on it. I have not personally gone around to looking into any of these comparisons yet, but regardless, C6 Ning is kinda nutty. Although, of course, take those with a grain of salt, because A, we don't know if the new Geo Resonance is gonna release the way they describe it was going to in the Zhongli buffs, and B, these calcs are still early, we do have to look more into it. But overall, I have been testing Alfredo in over 10 different team compositions in various different contents, and it's just kind of hard to justify him instead of a different unit when I have access to all of them. And the reason why I call this Kaching Syndrome is because it's a very similar situation for Kaching. See, Kaching is the most flexible carry in the entire game. She is arguably the best physical DPS carry in the game now that the new Cryo set enables her freeze comps to just really output more than Razor's teams possibly can. But she's also a very good electro carry, she can be a good cryo carry if you convert her with Chong Yun and again run a freeze comp. Hell, if you have a C6 Bennett, you can run her as a pyro carry. She can run electro charge comps, she can run overload comps, she's really the only single carry in the game that can theoretically tackle any content in the game without you having to have a new carry to sub in for her. This flexibility allows her to be a fantastic unit for free to play to play players to invest in because you only have to invest in her as the single carry, you don't have to have a wide stable. But the trade-off for this flexibility is that she's just never going to have the same DPS ceiling and max output as Klee and Deluc. Even with as overpowered as her charge attack spam is, which enables her to run all of these different kinds of compositions, none of these different kinds of damage type compositions she can run will output the same amount of raw DPS that a Klee or Deluc vape team can. And that's fine, that's well balanced, hence why I do talk about Alfredo being a very nicely balanced unit because similar to Kaching, he's incredibly flexible. You can just stick him into basically any team. And this means that his one set and one talent level up and one just stack of investment you put into Alfredo can go into basically any of your teams. This is an incredibly strong thing and does make him potentially very good for free to play and low to play players. However, similar to Kaching, he's simply just not best in slot for compositions, which still makes me hesitant to fully recommend momentum for free to play and low to play players, because he's not broken overpowered must pull level like Deluc and Venti. Which is fine, that's balanced, but it does mean if you can only realistically afford a pull for a handful of 5 star characters, then for your unique situation it might be better for you to save your primos for when Venti comes around on banner again or pray for Deluc to show up on banner. And there is also just the real possibility that any of the new 5 stars coming out in the next few months could simply put B must pulls. We don't know yet, they're not out yet. In our 
for honest opinions, Alfredo is simply put the most balanced 5 star they have put out. He is not underpowered like Zhang Li, he does not have super hard scaling issues like Chi Chi, but he is also not the Luke or Venti or Kli busted. He is not a weak unit and he is not an overpowered one. And he is very good for relatively cheap base damage output, but at the same time he has potential scaling issues if you care about the late late game scaling on him. At the end of the day, I hope that the information presented in this video helps you make an informed decision for your own unique situation on whether you want to pull for Alfredo or not. At the end of the day, he's not a must pull level, so that means we aren't going to wholeheartedly say everyone should be pulling for him. But he is a good unit, and for your unique situation, he may be a very good choice to pull for. And at the end of the day, all we can really do is arm you with the information we have collected for ourselves from testing, from math crunching, as well as from discussing with God knows how many theory crafters at this point, so that you can make an informed decision about whether Alfredo fits your needs for what you want or need for your team compositions and playstyles, and decide for yourself if he's worth it for you. Alright, last thing, let's just briefly talk about builds on him, because I know everyone wants to know what artifacts to run on him, what weapons are on him, etc. The TLDR is you're aiming for a defense main stat Sans, because it's still looking to be his best DPS output build, is to run defense on his timepiece. Obviously, you want to have a geo damage percentage cup, and then you of course want to have crit on your helmet because crit affects all of his damage sources and in general is the best in slot choice for any character's build. Whether you go for crit rate or crit damage depends on your starting crit stats, you're trying to aim for as close to a 1 to 2 ratio between your crit rate and crit damage as you can possibly get. As for set bonuses, the answer is it kind of doesn't matter, you do want to try to aim for at least a 2 piece Petra set and then of course 4 piece Petra if you want to use them as a Petra support for your teams. And then otherwise you don't really need set bonuses on him, the more important thing is to aim for as many defense and crit substats as you possibly can. Because of how split up his damage ends up being, 2-piece Noblesse is nice to increase his ult damage, but will not necessarily be a bigger DPS increase than simply having no second set bonus and having more defense and crit substats. Likewise, Defender's Will as well as Gambler's Will increase his E damage, but they're both locked into being 4 stars, which means they get worse substat rolls and less total substats, and it's very realistic for two offset pieces that don't have any set bonus to out DPS them because you're getting better crit and defense substat rolls. However, if you're going for the cheapest possible deep setup and you don't have any high defense rolling substat 5 star artifacts to just toss on him, then 2 piece defenders will along with 2 piece Petra is going to be the most bang for your buck just from the set bonuses. He is a weird unit to build because he's really the first time we've had someone who just doesn't really care about their set bonus, they just want to make sure that substats are good to increase their damage. Unless you want to run 4-piece Petra on him as a Petra support, although that does require you to switch to him on field and pick up crystallizers more often, which is questionably good on him. This does give you an opportunity to do the ICD reset I did allude to at the beginning of the video, however, like I said, it's not nearly as good as we thought it was, and I will be covering that in a future video instead. Now, if you are curious if your particular setup is better or not, depending on which pieces you switch out, I'd recommend taking a look at Cleefall's Alfredo Abacus. It's basically a DPS calculator where you can input different different artifacts, input different substats, different main stats, all that kind of stuff, different weapon choices, different refinement levels, and just see what the DPS output looks like. Link in the description to that if you want to take a look at that for yourself. Now as for weapons, as I mentioned, Harbinger of Dawn is looking to be his best weapon generally speaking, because if you have any amount of crypt substats, it starts beating out everything else for overall damage outputs. Now this does assume that the passive is up, and this does mean you cannot realistically run him with Bennett, because Bennett is A, not going to be able to heal him over 90% consistently. In fact, the only way to make sure Bennett can heal him over 90% every single time is for Bennett to heal 90% of Alfredo's health in a single tick, which is never going to happen. Even if you somehow manage to get him to 89% of Alfredo's total health in a single healing tick, Alfredo just has to be at below 1% health and he won't heal to 90. But also B, Bennett's ult is only going to be affecting his ult damage, not his E DPS output, so it's generally better to be sticking him on your non-Bennett team. At the end of the day, you only get one Bennett for Abyss, and as much as I would love to run Bennett as my healer for both teams, you can't, so just stick him on the not Bennett team. Also, with just how low an amount of time he spends on field, and how easy it is for other healers other than Bennett to heal up his chip damage, he kinda just is really good with Harbinger of Dawn. However, if you aren't willing to play around keeping him at over 90% health for Harbinger of Dawn, or you accidentally used all of them for fuel in your other weapons, or you just don't want to level up a Harbinger 
of Dawn because you already have enough swords. Then the your next best two options are either the new Longsword Festering Desire, which is very good for his E output because it gives him more crit chance on his E, gives him energy recharge to spam his ult more often for Ascension 4 buff. And then when we actually get it to Refinement 5 at the end of this current event, it's going to be very strong on him for just increasing his E damage. However, Festering Desire is also really good on other units like Bennett and Jean and Geo MC, so it might not be better to put it on him versus them. Especially because it is so cheap to level Festering Desire to level 90 because of the enhancement experience bonus we're getting during the event, that I think everyone should be leveling it to 90 during this event because it's so cheap to do so. And if you're like me, you don't level up any other weapons to level 90 because it's just too damn expensive. So for me personally, Festering Desire is permanently stuck on my Bennett because it has the highest base attack out of any of my weapons due to being level 90, making his ult attack buff the highest out of any of my weapon choices, and it's also just really good on him in general. Not to mention Harbinger of Dawn is just better on Alfredo than Festering Desire anyway. Your other two options other than these are pretty much going to either be Black Sword or Black Cliff Sword if you have that, because again, crit is the only thing that's going to scale both his E and his ult damage, so it's what you want to be building towards. ER Swords are also an option on him, but again, his ult output isn't as significant, so it's not necessarily important for him to be ulting that frequently unless you really want him to have the EM buff up all the time. But yeah, Harbinger of Dawn, or Festering Desire, or Black Sword, or Black Cliff Sword. Run a standard build main stat-wise on him, except you run a defense timepiece instead of an attack sands. And then make sure you get a two-piece Petra bonus, and then honestly just aim for the best defense and crit substat pieces you have. If you can, get it in two-piece Noblesse Oblige, or two-piece Gambles, or whatnot, but just aim for more defense and crit stats. And of course, if you want to run four-piece Petra on him, then just run four-piece Petra. Alright, that is it for the video. As always, thank you so much for checking out the video. Be sure to like the video, comment, and subscribe, and share the video with all your friends, all that good stuff. All these things just help push it up in the SEO so more people see the video naturally. If you want to help support us for free, it's the best way to do it. Also, a huge thank you to, well, all of the many, many theory crafters I've been talking with for the past few days, but especially to Robin and Cleeful. I did use some of the calculations from Robin's team building resources spreadsheet, so link to that in the description if you're curious to see all of that. He also has added a tab at the beginning of said spreadsheet talking about all of his findings on Alfredo so far. And of course, I did mention Cleeful's Alfredo Abacus, which will also be linked in the description. Cleeful is a friend of ours who does do a lot of calculations on Genshin, as well as puts out several calculators for various different characters. Be sure to go check him out because he does stream live on Twitch whenever he's doing some interesting fun stuff, as well as a link in the description to his Twitter where he does post updates about all the stuff he is also working on. And don't forget, Tuner does stream every day over on twitch.tv slash Tuner. He is our resident Noel main, but he is also doing a lot of free comp testing with the new cryo set that came out. And yes, Kaya is the much stronger choice as a carry over Chongyun for said freeze comps. If you'd like to see that comp being used live, be sure to go check him out. And don't forget to check out our Twitters. The at JinxMathless is my personal account where I do post my various spreadsheets I'm working on, my thoughts on things before they come to video form, that sort of thing. And the at Jinx Tuner is the company account run by Tuner. That one's more for channel updates, things going on with us, official business stuff, as well as updates about Tuner's Twitch. And of course, we have our Discord server, the Matalos Nest. Cool group of peeps over there, all learning together, helping each other out, so definitely come hang out. And of course, none of this would be possible without the generosity of our patrons. I do say this every single video, and y'all know I'm gonna say it every video, y'all the best. Alright guys, as always, the things in the video are going to be in the description, so scroll down and see the links to all the things we showed off in the video, whether they were mine, Robins, Cleefalls, whoever's. I'll also be including a link to the Full Metal Albedo server, which is the R Albedo main's official Discord server. Lots of cool theory crafters over there as well. Alright, cool, that's completely it for the video. As always, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you want to know about any new videos as soon as they come out. The next video is going to be talking about about cryo sets and cryo compositions using the new cryo sets. And also, very importantly, why Kaya should be the carry for your cryo team, not Chong Yun. Alright, happy waifu hunting waiters. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!